Hi, I'm Mike. And today we're gonna take a look at three homemade, hand-produced and, and uh, self-engineered ideas that we put into work here on the ranch that help us out every single day. Also, Aaron and I are gonna get a chance to sit down and talk about how COVID-19 has affected the ranch this week and how it will continue in the future. It's all coming up. Welcome back to another one of our 30 vlogs in 30 days. Thanks for coming along with us as we uh, basically look to fill the time during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I'm not really sure how you're dealing with it, but here on the ranch, things really haven't changed that much. Aaron and I, Aaron and I were talking last night that uh, we have uh, we're spending less money. You're not stopping at the grocery store. You're not stopping at the gas station. You're saving money on gas, which is good, I guess. Uh, but for us here, it's pretty much just been uh, staying home as much as possible, getting projects done, and pretty much hanging out with you. So that's what uh, that's what we've been doing here. Last week uh, on the, uh, the the 30 vlogs in 30 days, uh, we had Mackenzie come and hang out with us and show us the three favorite things on the ranch, the stuff that she loves, that she couldn't live without. And she did a great job doing that. Afterwards, Aaron and I sat down and talked about COVID-19, how it affects the ranch. This week, we, Aaron and I will be doing the same thing towards the end of this video, so stick around for that. But as we start out, what I wanted to do this week is kind of along the same lines as what Mackenzie did, but I wanna show you three things on the ranch that we use every single day that were self-engineered, self-designed, and self-produced here on the ranch that we came up with all by ourselves. Uh, well, a little bit of internet help there and there, but uh, pretty much we, we, we did the plans, we figured them out for ourselves, and we made them work for ourselves. And I'm gonna show you around, show you some of those. And we're gonna start with the incinerator, which is used almost daily here on the ranch uh, in order to reduce our um, trash impact, whether it be on our own dump, on the city dump, uh, landfill in the county or what. Uh, if we can take care of some stuff by ourselves, we do that. And I'm gonna show you that incinerator and it's right over there. But first, we're gonna grab some stuff to throw in it. It really seems that we live in a society that loves to produce trash. And while we try to eliminate as much as possible, obviously we can't. So when it comes to elimination, the incinerator is boss around here. The building of the incinerator was done like most things around here out of necessity. And this one actually goes all the way back to Gilbert's time here on the ranch. Gilbert loved to burn trash. It was something that he had to do every single day. Unfortunately, Gilbert liked to do it in a big metal trash can. And we would have, the wind would be blowing, sparks would be flying, uh, paper would be flying up in the air. And um, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised we never burned anything down. That brought about this thing. This is the incinerator. Uh, I don't even remember what year I built this thing, uh, but I do remember just coming up with the idea that there's gotta be a safer way to burn trash. And this is what, this is what came out of it. So it started out as an anhydrous ammonia tank, actually. Uh, I found it sitting over at the dump and decided that uh, it could have a second life here on the ranch. Ranchers always say that they don't throw anything away. Uh, I have no idea how long this thing was sitting over at the dump before I decided to do something with it. It was really kind of my first uh, foray into doing something original for the ranch. And like I said, Gilbert liked to burn trash. Uh, and we figured this might be a safer way to do it. And it turns out that it, it, that it works really well. And I did find, I think if you ever heard of a website, it's called Instructables. 
I think I did find something kind of along these lines on that website, except for the one that I found that I originally wanted to build actually had burners in it. So you would put, put trash in there, fire up the burners, and it would you know basically vaporize anything that was in there. I, I think it ran off of like oil fuel or something like that. This is actually a deconstructed version of that. Uh, and this one, obviously, it does not have a fuel source. It is just for uh, getting rid of paper and trash and things that'll burn uh, relatively easily. We try not to burn plastic in it. We try not to burn um, uh, anything that's not gonna it, completely go away. So uh, we do burn net wrap in it a lot of times just because we deal with so much net wrap that we do have to get rid of it. And I hate putting it in the dumpster for the trash guy to take away because then it just ends up in a landfill somewhere. So this actually turns it in, turns most everything into ash. We can take the ash out. I'll show you how we do that. And, uh, and then and clean it out as well. So we're gonna load her up here really quick. I don't know how it is at your guys' house, but when we order stuff from Amazon, they sent in the biggest boxes possible. This box had one tube of lipstick in it. Okay, maybe it had a little bit more than that, but it's a ridiculous size box for probably whatever was scented. All right, so that's all I've got for today. Let's uh, walk through this thing really quick, just so I can show you how I built it and uh, and what, uh, what my thought process was behind it. So first of all, we have the doors that lead into the incinerator. There's actually two sets of doors. There's a top door, and then I built this bottom door, uh, which opens up, and it's actually, they're held closed by these little bolts. Um, you can open this up so you can fit larger stuff in there. I rarely ever have to. So, I mean, really a door this size, which is what, about two by four probably, uh, works pretty well. So, everything's just welded together. I also welded uh, flaps over some of, the, uh, some of the gaps to keep any flames from shooting out. There is one heck of a stove pipe on it. And that basically keeps, uh, that's, our, that's our chimney of sorts. And that allows airflow to move up and out. On this end, we have airflow in where it comes inside. Um, and we have a damper on it, which I usually just keep closed. And then that allows air to move in while stuff is burning. I talked about cleaning it out and that is actually accomplished on this side of things where when I built it, I knew I would need a way to clean it out. So what I did was I cut off the entire end of the thing and it can completely swing open and you can clean it out from there. But it is a dirty job when you do have to clean it out. It's, uh, it can make a mess. Gilbert not only enjoyed uh, I think I think he I think he enjoyed you know burning trash uh, mostly for the sake that he was kind of a pyromaniac so he liked the fire aspect of it and what Gilbert would do is he would mix gasoline and diesel usually in about a 50 50 ratio he would put it in an old ketchup bottle and then when he would throw stuff in the dumpster he would spray it down and then light it on fire uh, needless to say Gilbert uh, came back lots of times without eyebrows uh, with burnt up gloves, uh, all kinds of bad things happen because of that. And that's another reason we decided to do this this way. You don't actually require any type of accelerant. You can just light it, close the door, and then the, the air moving through actually feeds the fire really well and uh, makes sure that everything is burned down to an ash. So there we go. That's the incinerator. It'll burn for probably about a half an hour or so to get rid of all that stuff. Uh, it does get plenty warm. The Originally when I built it, I painted it with black barbecue paint. Uh, you can see how well that worked. It, uh, it didn't stay on very long, it burnt it right off. So it definitely gets warm, um, but uh, it does the job and I get to keep my eyebrows.
Our next stop as we uh, head out to uh, take a look at what else that we've built around here that we utilize pretty much every single day that didn't come with blueprints, didn't come with plans, just came out of the old noggin, is the chicken house. The chicken house, uh, I think, I, I have trouble remembering what year we built these things, but Gilbert was still alive when we built it. Um, we had, the original chicken house was actually just an old barn back here and uh, that had chickens in it. They, they actually called it the mother-in-law house, so it may have been a house at some point, but they had chickens in it. Uh, they had some issues with uh, every once in a while, a cow would get in there and, and just destroy uh, the chicken house because uh, they all had, I guess they had, they were commingling, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so uh, this chicken house was built basically because Aaron, wanted a buttload of chickens. 99% of the time our chickens are our free range chickens, but we do have a chicken run set up. And right now the peacocks are living in here, uh, but this is set up just in case we do have a predator that comes in, uh, we can deal with that and basically just let the chickens stay over here in the chicken run. They can, you know, spend their days in here and they're safe from predators. Right now, like I said, the, the peacocks are in there and uh, hanging out and doing their things because honestly, they're not really that smart <laughs> and uh, they tend to walk in the face of trouble. Whereas a chicken will run and hide, uh, a peacock thinks that they're invincible. I don't know if it's because they're cute or what, um, but uh, it never, never ends well. So the peacocks are actually in isolation right now. I built the chicken coop. It was probably our first or second he year here on the on the ranch, and I honestly did not have any clue what I was doing. I had never built an entire building before, and I probably screwed up lots of things, but it's still standing all these years later, and it is huge. It is 24 feet by 24 feet. Uh, I built it to hold basically a hundred chickens and I built it to have different rooms inside so you could have uh, you know baby chicks on one side or, or something along those lines and then you know your 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 egg layers on the other side I didn't know what I was doing but uh, it's still here which is kind of impressive so you have one side which is basically dedicated to just chickens and on this side they have all their boxes <laughs> where they can lay all their eggs. On the other side, this is where the peacocks live and hang out whenever they're doing whatever peacocks do. While we're in here, we're gonna collect eggs really quick and take those back to Erin, because I know that'll make her happy. Uh, a little bit of history in here. This chicken house was built, uh, completely finished out, insulated and everything else. We had a fire in here one year, which actually threatened to destroy the entire chicken house. Uh, that fire was put out, but we did end up losing all the insulation. I ended up having to come in and redo a lot of the wood inside. Uh, some of the siding on the outside is burnt up pretty well, but it was still usable and still functional. So if nothing else, it's, uh, it's held up through the, through the years. It's got electricity, we've got lights, we've got a heater hanging up here that we can use sometimes. We don't use it that often, but occasionally. And uh, it's not a bad place for chickens to live. I could think of a lot worse places for them to be. So Aaron last week sold 81 dozen eggs out of the, ch out of the uh, farmhouse that came directly out of the chicken house. So that makes it worth it and makes it another item here on the ranch that we can't live without and that we solved the problem in ourselves and, uh, and figured out a way to make it work for us. That's one day's worth of eggs from these chickens. So they're definitely doing their job right about now. So they say that necessity was the mother of invention, which is probably true, like 50% of the time. The rest of the time, the mother of invention 
it's just pure laziness. Which brings us to our drive over ramp. Now you've seen me use it quite a few times in videos, but really the uh, whole purpose behind this ramp came from the fact that I hated opening this gate. During calving season, I'm out here all the time. I'm going through this gate, I'm checking cows, I'm driving around cows, I'm turning around, I'm coming back. I'm opening the gate again and then coming back through. And after a few years of doing that, I thought there's gotta be a better way to do this, uh, and I looked at automatic gate openers, which would work, except for when you have a foot of snow, they're not gonna move at all. And I thought, that, you know, there's gotta be a better way to do this, and that led me to, of course, Google, uh, and I started looking at uh, ramps in order to, uh, to, to solve this problem. So what we came up with is a modified version of a gate ramp that we found online, and this was built out of oil field pipe that we happen to have laying around and all welded together in the shop, pulled out here, put in place with the skid steer, and ever since then it has been, uh, I won't say a lifesaver, but it has made my life easier. A little bit. The big trick was to figure out uh, what kind of angle we could actually use uh, for the ramp and still be able to get over it with the gator, which was our, our main goal. We could have built one uh, for the tractor, but this seemed to work pretty well. Uh, the darn thing is, is about 20 feet long, uh, weighs a few thousand pounds, and is a giant pain in the butt to move around. So once we decided where we were gonna put it, this is where it went. And I use it every single day over and over and over again. It's probably one of the most useful things we've ever built. Uh, for daily use anyway, here on the ranch. So there you go, three things on the ranch that although we could probably live without, we don't want to. And three things that we were able to build ourselves, design ourselves, and implement all by ourselves. I, I, I and one thing when we came here and I started uh, learning about uh, farming and ranching and stuff is the, is the, uh, the innovation that farmers and ranchers hold that they're able to see a problem and come up with a solution for it and i really do hope that even during these times these trying times that we're going through here in the united states and throughout the world that we are able to stick true to that notion and and solve problems for ourselves i know that uh, we get bored around the house we have kids at home now and we're dealing with homeschooling and we have you can't run to town and, and buy a, a self-tapping screw if you happen to need one uh, we come up with new solutions and that's what everybody's going to have to do here for a little while is you're going to have to come up with a solution to a problem and that's all that we did here with these three items today we saw a problem whether it was gilbert's missing eyebrows aaron's need for more chickens or my laziness and not wanting to open a gate we saw a problem and we solved it and sometimes that's all the world needs do you do you like the ramp uh you know the up and over ramp yeah yeah i like the ramp it's you're getting some ruts we need some gravel we do need some gravel i, I remember when i first put it out there though it kind of scared you well because you like look at the seat you look at the ceiling <laughs> <laughs> that big blue thing in the sky the sky um i mean it's it's it is very steep and it is a little steep it, if, it, if i could do it over again i would have made it about 10 feet longer yeah and so it just didn't have that much of a slope coming up because it is pretty it is pretty steep. Little hill. <laughs> and then on the when you're coming out of the field like you're already going up a hill and it's it, True. and it drifts like i was worried when you were in california and i was checking cows and stuff like i was worried i was going to get stuck and i mean but yes i to not have to open the gate it's definitely, it just needs tweaking. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is in the wintertime when it's slick, like, you know, you can yeah. tell it's icy. There's been times I've come over it, you know, going pretty quick and it's like, woo, a little slippery. Yeah. You know, like, I'm afraid I'm going to slide off the side of it. But It could be a little longer and just a little wider. Yeah. Or like some safety rails, like, <laughs> like, um, like bumpers. Oh, like at the bowling alley. Yeah, so yeah. You just kind of could... make your way through. Yeah, that if you could fun. do that. Because I think like we're teasing Kenzie that it's like her turn to start checking cows and stuff. I think the ramp scares her too. Oh yeah, yeah. But she'd probably <laughs> rather get out and open the gate. I would not. <laughs> no. Well, she wouldn't if it was cold out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we need like one of those uh, those big old ticker things that you know, like COVID nineteen day forty five. I was going to try and figure out how many days it's been since I've been to the grocery store, and I can't really remember. Is that how you're keeping track of how long we've been locked in at home? Well, like the last trip I went to, made to Walmart, I feel like that was like like the last like normal thing I did. I'm trying to think. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I post office is about. I mean, we, I take yeah. I take jerky to the post office, and they've got their goofy I know, four I was... people allowed in the post office at a time rule. So there's a bunch <laughs> of people standing around outside together. Um, but uh, they're doing the best they can. I, I don't know. It's, it's we a did, government operation. We did go. <laughs> we did go on Friday to. I went with you to take jerky. It was like our first trip to town together in a very long time. And I was just like, everywhere I see people, like, um, I do think, like, people are trying to practice social distancing. And, like, I do think that there was, like, less traffic and stuff around town. But a lot of stuff I was like, is this helping? Yeah. <laughs> but I think people are trying. I think businesses that are open are trying to put policies in place that um, abide by the guidelines that are changing daily. But I do think people are, I think people are trying. Yeah. So. It's, I, you know, there's people that are trying, and then there's people that are just plainly not trying, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I ran into a situation where uh, I was, uh, I stopped by the feed store, and I ran into a fan at the feed store, and of course she comes running over and she gives me a hug, and then I'm like, two seconds later, I'm like, oh crap, like, you know, this Shame is way you. within six feet. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're way, way within the six feet thing. So, I mean, so they're, they're that, you know, still, it's still for here, it's still getting used to that. I mean, too. I mean, are you used to like keeping your distance from people still? I, I, I catch myself, even like the UPS guy will drop something off and, and him and I are standing at opposite ends of the garage talking to each other. You know, it's kind of like, this is weird. <laughs> so I did have a, um, a customer come in the farm store that I hadn't seen in a few months and we like, we did the elbow bump oh, thing and stuff. Nice. Um, Who's that? Um, I don't think I would have initiated. It's not anybody that you oh, know. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just wonder who you know that's cool enough to help with that. <laughs> um, I don't think I, I don't know. I just was like, oh, we're, okay, yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't seen you for a long time. So, yeah, that was that was nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a brave new world. I haven't seen Megan in weeks, like, in person. And, like, we exchange stuff at her door often. <laughs> <laughs> like some weird drop-off spot. Yeah, you yeah. had to do a drop-off yeah. last week. Yeah. We did one on oh. Friday. Like, so here's I'm... your eggs. <laughs> I'm not dealing drugs. I swear they're just eggs. And she, and, and she had my paycheck taped to the door. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this week I picked up seeds and dropped off eggs and honey. <laughs> so um, it is. It is something that takes some getting used to, and and obviously things are continually changing. So this week uh, we finally found out about school for the kids. The teachers mm -hmm. finally put together. Um, their curriculums or however this is going to work and even that now now we got to figure that out so it's not only are you trying every week every, almost yeah. every day it's like something new they well it's not every day but it you know for some people i'm sure it is yeah but you have to figure out something a different way to do something every single day i think things are changing really rapidly and like i was just even thinking back to like the the girls uh spring uh concert their choir concert which was not that long ago no. and it was right at the beginning of the toilet paper um it was pandemonium was, and we were yeah, trying yeah. to order toilet paper on amazon yeah. and stuff and like it wasn't that long ago it really wasn't um but it seems like at, as everyone knows and has experienced, like the whole world has changed mm -hmm. so much in just like a month. So, um, yeah, I mean, almost every day, like, you know, like Monday, like we find out like, oh, next week you guys will be homeschooling and, and teachers are working on a plan and had some communication with, with both the girls' teachers and Lincoln's preschool. And then Thursday, no, Friday, school bus uh, brought um, packets for each of the girls with like a plan of what we have to do and stuff. So... Yeah, I don't know. Lincoln had a Zoom call with his preschool class. Things are happening. I don't know. We're adapting. Girls did piano on Zoom. Not the best. No, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. And um, their teacher is, did a great job, I think, uh, trying to teach piano on Zoom. And now we're using the Marco Polo app to, like, communicate back and forth. And, like, Mackenzie's, like, test, like, marking off songs, like, that she has to learn and stuff. Like, we're adapting. We're using technology. Uh, but Mackenzie got frustrated. You were filming. I had the farm store, which was really busy. And so I was in and out and in and out. And they were trying to, like, I just left them with, like, Zoom on the iPad. And Mackenzie, here's the mute button. <laughs> like have at it uh, she got really frustrated and there was tears yeah i don't expect that to be the last tear so no. <laughs> not only from the kids i mean even even the even doing the homeschooling thing which is something we're not used to obviously mm -hmm. and it's even yeah that's 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 daunting for us to look at this and say holy crap you got we got to do all this in a week 
you yeah. have to send pictures of homework to the to the teacher to make sure that you're doing stuff. You have to do an online attendance somehow. I'm not doing you're that. You're stand there. Mackenzie, are you here? Here. Grace, are you here? Here. Lincoln, are you here? Lincoln, are you here? Lincoln, are you here? Lincoln, are you know, I mean. Preschool is Bueller, different. Bueller, Bueller. You remember that show? Yeah, and like it's <laughs> it's it's hard because like Mackenzie's in third grade, and I got her packet, and I looked through hers first, and I was like, "Cool, we can do this." Mackenzie can do a lot of it. I get Grace's packet, and it's like three times as thick. Some of the stuff I'm like, she can't do this without us like spending yeah. time sitting there with her. I have no idea how we're gonna do it. I honestly don't know how we're gonna do it. Yeah, and then Lincoln even had preschool, you know, <laughs> stuff to do too. So via Zoom. Yeah, it's it is weird. It's and so another weird part about this whole thing is that uh, we were contacted by the state of Wyoming, <laughs> who uh, wants us to do. People apparently they they think people are going to listen to us because they want us to do public service announcements on washing your hands and staying away from people. And are we allowed and, to talk about this? I, I don't see why not. It's a public, we're not getting paid, so I mean, I can talk about whatever the hell I want. I didn't sign a no disclosure agreement. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're sending a film crew up tomorrow, actually, and we're going to film PSAs for the state of Wyoming that are saying, you know, basically the basic gist, you know, stay away from people, get away. I don't know whose idea this was. It, uh, it, it was uh, apparently our governor's idea as far as I, uh, I can gather. It's very humbling that, and I hope we can, I hope we can deliver a, mes a message that, that will help and I mean, we're just going to tell people to stay home and wash their hands, I'm yeah. assuming. We don't really know yet, but... I, that kind of, I think that's the gist of it. I mean, there really isn't... Uh, there's no hidden message here. It's uh, stay yeah. home, wash your hands, uh, avoid social interactions as much as possible, I guess, and uh, yeah. you know, flatten the curve. Yeah, Wyoming's not on a stay-in-place, stay shelter-in-place, stay-at-home order, um, which, like, at... I was kind of disappointed that like we didn't go under a stay in place, shelter in place this week, but at the same time, like I understand Governor Gordon's reasoning of we're adults and, and we need yeah. we can do what we need to do and, and but we need to stay safe, practice social distancing, wash our hands and only go out for essentials. Honestly, like we would all the things that we're going to town for, like we would be allowed to go to town for. Right. So Nothing the would only thing change. I've been to town for in like a week is to go to the post office. It seems like yeah. when I go to town, I just go to the post office. And like we had a really busy week where you were like transporting animals and stuff, but like that all would have been allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's kind of Governor Gordon's point is that every state that has a shelter in place has just so many exemptions. Yeah. Um, and so all of our travel would have been allowed underneath most states' um, exemptions. So we all just need to be smart and we need to stay at home. And I'm in some ways happy that like I don't want to be stopped on the highway by a sheriff's deputy and have him ask why going? we're going yeah. and that just exposes that sheriff's deputy that first responder to more people mm -hmm. I don't need to have contact with a sheriff's deputy at this point not today I'm not doing anything wrong yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah we just everybody needs to to be smart and not selfish like mm -hmm. you have to your actions affect other people do you feel more comfortable now uh you know last time last week we did one of these little sit downs you know do you feel more comfortable now with are, are you still as nervous or i just I mean, think i've gotten used to the panic <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this is what it is this is what it is ask me ask me next week after we do five days of homeschool yeah there you go we'll see if aaron's not here we'll know what we'll know what happened but this is our goal is every week we do get a chance to sit down talk about um how covid19 is affecting wyoming how it's affecting the ranch and how it's affecting us and you know kind of show you guys that uh, that nobody's alone in this we all we all have our issues that we're dealing with and and that's the whole point of the 30 vlogs in 30 days as well is to give everybody a release and some place to go and and a way to escape for even if it's only 20 minutes out of your day at least you get a chance to uh to to take a step back and realize that the world's not shutting down everybody's still doing what they have to do everybody's still out checking cows and doing all that kind of good i mean stuff. i think our situation and we knew this from the beginning it is very unique because we have the ranch we work outdoors we're not cooped up in an apartment in a city um i i didn't realize how much i do go to the grocery store or just like you know megan and i would get together and and work together on something rather than over the phone. It's definitely impacted our everyday lives, but we're lucky. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like when we're both feeling cooped up, it is just 
go outside. So, I do feel I feel bad for the kids. Of course, we yeah. went through this before, but yeah, they don't know what's going on really. I, I just dealt with Mackenzie who was crying because she misses her friends. And I think Mackenzie's it's impacting her the most. Grace will never be as vocal about it. Um, and so she's like, she'll be the one that's in like 20 years of therapy. She'll be vocal <laughs> yeah. about it. And she'll be like, I wanted to talk to my friend. Well, why yeah. didn't you tell your mom? Because, you know. Yeah. So we're obviously trying to keep them connected with their friends. I think some, we've essentially been three weeks with no school. Mm. I think as hard as homeschool, I'm anticipating it will be hard, but I think it'll, once we get in the groove of it, I think it'll bring some normalcy that they will appreciate. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for joining us once again. Uh, the 30 on 30 continues tomorrow and we'll have a brand new video. Also, uh, we have a live stream coming up tonight on the Beyond the Ranch channel that uh, happens at 6 p.m. hopefully unless uh, the uh, state of Wyoming's film crew is still here we'll find out but uh, we will let you guys know you can always check us out on Facebook and Instagram and, and keep track of where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing so that's pretty much it you have anything else to say no all right thanks guys stay safe <laughs>